Welcome to Fishing Britain. Coming up, presenting gear guide this week is Ant Glasgow Jr. And he's going to be showing you how to pimp up your crankbaits. We've got the old favourites hooked on YouTube and Fishing Britain news. But first, we're off to Bill Water in the hunt for Monster Pike. We're on Buell Water, having a look at the growth of any method fishing. But this is ridiculous. Finn the Labrador is clearly half grizzly, but James Garrett, head ranger here, says he's all mouth and no trousers, and Finn hasn't even reached the bag limit. Others have, using fly or spinner or bait for the variety of game fish and predator fish in this water. They've seen a big growth in business since declaring the water any method a few seasons ago. However, James warns that you have to have space to avoid conflict. This year has started off very encouragingly. Most weekends our 54 boats are fully booked. Some Saturdays if there's a fly fishing competition on then it might be a 60-40 a split in favour of uh, fly fishing. But typically I'd say it's, 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 we've, we're getting more any method fishermen than fly fishermen during our busy weekends. It is a big enough water I think to accommodate both both methods or any method of, of, of fishing. You know, I don't think it would work very well on a small fishery because the two would come into close contact and they don't necessarily operate very well when they're operated in a very confined area. Rob and James are restocking the blue trout today, distributing them with the help of Finn around this giant reservoir, the largest in the southeast of England. They only select the biggest to taste freedom. It's worth noting where they're going as sporting shooter editor and keen fisherman Dom Holtam is going after them with rented gear, both spinning and on the fly. Been dragged out of the office, I haven't got any gear with me, but I understand yeah. that you guys offer stuff for hire for... Yes, we've got, we've got any method uh, spinning outfits um, and, uh, and also fly outfits. So yep, we can hire you either, either of those. I'll give you a set of each today so you can try the different merits of fly fishing and spinning. And, and what kind of method do you recommend in terms of, you know, if, if we're spinning for pike and perch, just around the fringes of the lake? Around the margins, yes. All the flooded uh, areas where there's willow down into the water, um, anywhere. Really, you know, the fish are very well spread at the moment. Um, this year's fry have uh, hatched as pin fry everywhere in the water. A lot of those have hatched in the margins where the, where the trees are flooded, so all around those tree roots. So that's where the fry will be and that's where the predatory fish, the pike, the perch and, and the trout that have switched on to feeding on, on uh, fry. To show just how times have changed, the signage is now multilingual. The Any Method Fishing is attracting new anglers from all communities. Today there was a father and son for instance, uh, the father's probably practised in fly fishing but the son had a spinning rod. He's not, he hasn't learnt to fly fish yet but he can still go fishing with his dad and fish yeah. rather than just sit and watch. Yeah. Uh, a lot of Eastern Europeans coming and, and, and using the facility here. So it's good to see, it's good to see, yeah. Dom is ready for action, unfamiliar gear and lots and lots of water. Our goal is a pike. There was a 25 pounder caught at the weekend, but in general, it's the little guys. Dom starts by working the margins with the spinner, then we get a potentially useful drive-by. You told him how bad I am at fishing, David. <laughs> bit this way, bit this way. <laughs> bit rude, on it? <laughs> Every little helps. It always feels quite weird using someone else's, someone else's lures. I think you become quite superstitious as a as a fisherman that there are certain kind of go-to lures that always work for you. And using something out of the ordinary is not always very comfortable. And it's also getting an excuse in the bag early and not catching anything. I only had my arm next with me. Dom has managed a few nice days out fly fishing, but a trip to the Thurso last year delivered some red letter days. Conditions were awful for salmon fishing. Um, 
but right at the top near the lock we fished on that beat and there was a massive hatch of fly and uh, I bet between three of us we got 150 trout on dry fly it was just absolutely magical and I know most people would have kind of scorned them and said they'd rather be salmon fishing but I absolutely loved it this squirrel is living dangerously and Dom reckons it could easily end up being a fluffy dish for a decent sized pike as they will apparently eat anything. So I read in, in a book as a, a young lad and he was playing kind of the Battle of Trafalgar or whatever it was, floating this croquet mallet in the, in the lake at the family pile in the country and something came along, grabbed the croquet mallet and cleared off with it and it then beached itself at high speed and it was later landed by one of the gardeners and it was a massive pike. I didn't make it up, somebody else did. Then Dom gets a bite. I'd say coloration wise it looks like a little trout. A little blue. Okay, not quite the pike we were expecting but just goes to show that those trout are pretty hungry. Do you want a few tea? Yeah. Right. There's no doubt if you were just after trout, you get a much better fight off a uh, off a light fly outfit. That would you know that would have been you know five minutes of fun playing that was about a pound and a half or so. Um, obviously, the spinning gear is a bit a bit heavier duty because it's designed to to get on top of bigger pike. Um, but uh, yeah, it just goes to show we work along these, these fringes where the, the trees are, are flooded, hoping to get a perch or a pike in the margins. And uh, yeah, nice blue trout. So that's David's supper sorted. Um, anything else is just a bonus. We'll keep, we'll keep trying. We head to the opposite bank to drift and fish the fly rod. Cameraman David has a sneaky go with the spinner and lands another blue, which sorts out tea for all of us tonight. Then Dom gets a rainbow with the fly. Had a bit of a switch round. David's been trying his hand at the spinning. Um, and we've just come over to the opposite side of the lake where I thought maybe some of the fly life was getting blown into the margins. And we've just had a nice take on the fly gear. Never like it when they see the net. Oops. Oh, that's handy because the fly has just come out in the net. So I think what we'll do is we'll put this one straight back. Pound, pound and a half, pound and three quarters. And we'll put him back to go and grace someone else's dinner table. So there we go. That's, uh, we've had a couple on the spinning gear and switched over to the fly gear in 20 minutes. Had one on the fly gear as well. So it just goes to show. You don't need all the fancy gear, you can turn up and hire it from the lodge and still get something for your supper. So a successful outing, Dom tries for the elusive pike for another half an hour before we head for the shore. If you'd like to take advantage of Buell's Any Method Fishing, then visit buellwater.co.uk for more info. David caught his first ever trout here today, and if he can, anyone can. Still to come, and Glasgow Junior will be playing with his Muppets. But now it's time to hand over to our very own glove puppet with googly eyes. Here's David with the news. This is Fishing Britain News. The totally awesome fishing show on YouTube has made the papers. Fishing from a 17-footer, Graham Pullen caught and tagged a 450-pound Paul Beagle shark that left its mark on the side of the boat. Click on the link on the screen to watch the whole episode. The former editor of Trout and Salmon Association's magazine, Clive Graham Ranger, has died aged 72. Author of the books such as Fishing with Bill Sibbons and A Particular Lun, Ranger worked in the newspaper industry all his life, including the Daily Mirror and the Sunday Times. He was a contributor to Field Sports Channel on fishing, especially covering Hampshire's chalk streams. The lack of oxygen in seawater, which killed tens of thousands of fish, is nothing unusual, according to local officials. 
The large shoal of anchovies found in a Californian marina starved the water of oxygen. Pelicans, gulls and even sea lions flocked to Marina del Rey near Los Angeles to feed off the tons of dead fish floating on the surface. Salmon and sea trout from the North Sea will net millions when the floodgates open. A barrage on the River Derwent at Barmby on the marsh is being opened for eight hours a day from Saturday the 24th of May 2014. It's been closed for the last 40 years. It will allow thousands of salmon and sea trout migrating along the ooze from the sea to enter the 72-mile river and its tributaries. The fishing could be worth at least £12.5 million a year. And finally, four fishermen saved a baby humpback whale off the coast of Geraldton in Western Australia. The humpback became distressed as its tail became tangled among craypot lines. One of the crew members, Joe Brogan, dived off the boat with a knife and cut the whale free. You are now up to date with Fishing Britain News. Fishing for facts, landing the stories. Thank you, David. Still to come, Charlie will be treading in the footsteps of a story from a hundred years ago, written by one of his ancestors. But now it's time to pimp up your tackle. It's Gear Guide. A simple Muppet like this can totally transform a crankbait into something absolutely amazing. So let me just run you through how to add this simple Muppet onto the back treble. Okay, using the split ring scissors, we remove back treble off the split ring. We then take this cheap and cheerful Muppet then we cut his face off, or the top of his head. We then take the bare treble and shove it through, up through the arse of the Muppet, pull it nice and flush. And we then put the treble back onto the split ring and Bob's your uncle. So there you go, crankbait pimped up. Cheap and cheerful, it's put lots of fish on the bank and on the boat for me. It's cost me pennies, and who knows, it might work for you. Give it a whirl. Well done, Ant. Fantastic tip there. And just remember, next time you go and visit your own tackle shop, have a look around, and you could create some fantastic lures. If you create a killer, please post a picture on our Facebook page. Now, Charlie is all the way in France on the hunt for a hundred year old trout. Cool, bet it smells. Ah, bonjour, Arc de Triomphe and Cordon Bleu. We are looking for the French trout fishing. There's a lot of interest in this part of northern France this year. A hundred years since we fought the First World War here. Seventy years since we landed at Normandy. And when they weren't fighting, the fishermen among the Allied troops would do the same as me. Well, here's a lovely little book. It's a hundred years since the beginning of the First World War and Sport in Peace and War, written after it by Anthony Buxton, is about the fishing and shooting and hunting he enjoyed while the battles of Northern France raged around him. And one of his favorite places was the mill at Hezek. It's a bit run down, more a candidate for grand designs than fishing Britain. But in those days, it was an angling magnet. He writes, the mill at Hezek was the scene of most of our sport in this county, for not only was the run immediately below the mill the best part of the river, but the meadow above it, bounded on one side by the river, was converted by us into a creditable polo ground. He calls it a deep river with muddy banks, well that's true today, and he describes one spectacular fish. He writes, giving him plenty of time and waiting until, as the French say, il donne bien, I presented him with a driffield done which he took with a great deal more confidence than they are apt to do at Driffield. There were bushes on both sides of the river below him, which nearly met in the middle, and with his first rush he was between them and leaping in the air below them, with the lines still hitched up in their branches. But even in fishing the fates sometimes kind enough to drive the hook into the right place, to extricate the hopelessly entangled line and to guide the angler's trembling hand. He was the best fish in appearance and weight, 
that I caught in France, two and a quarter pounds. Well, there's nothing rising here now, and there's a big sign saying fishing is forbidden. So let's go somewhere else on this river, the River Lys, and try and catch another trout. We set off in the car and find an atang, a pond which offers carp and, they promise, trout. So it's out with the fly rod. Nothing rising, but it is not bereft of fish. I can see carp cruising on the surface. Maybe there are trout underneath. I think Buxton would be turning in his grave, but um, I'm going to use a Montana. Sort of montana -y looking piece of water, really. Well, anything with big visible carp in it. This water is worth a slow walk. It feels a bit like walking around a swimming pool, what with the hot French weather. Uh, right, let's get a little bit further up and see if we can see anything up here. Anything more trout-like would be nice. There's more than carp in this pond. These newts are having fun. I'm having fun, but not in a catching fish kind of way. <laughs> I happen to like knitting. I think knitting is a very interesting sport, much underrated. It's actually impossible how well knotted this line has become. Do you think the theory that if your line gets knotted, it's time to get new lines? It's going to come true because I'm just going to cut this with a knife in a minute. As I pull that loop through, and what do I get? Another loop. Brilliant. <laughs> ah, observe. Oh, we're getting somewhere. Right. See. We do a little bit of random unloopage. That can come out through there. One. Go through there. That one. And that, children, is how you do it. <laughs> now, as you say, the Montana is in brothels. Let's see what lives on the bottom of this lake. Yep, weed. I thought so. I think the officers of the First World War would be reasonably impressed with my kit. I mean, they had short split cane rods, but they must have been misery to use. You're fighting a war and you've got to spend a night soaking your gut, and the chances of your line making it through these conditions without rotting would be thin. Also, your range of flies. Fly technology at the time was old fashioned, to say the least. Now, I'd rather be fishing in 2014 than 1914, for lots of reasons. Just as happened to the British Expeditionary Force in the First World War, I am getting bogged down. For them, it was Flanders. For me, it's the trout. I try flashing the fly in front of the carp. I try dropping it ahead of the carp. They are having none of it. Well, fishing, like war, is very much about victory and defeat. So, um... I'll see you in Versailles. The Pas de Calais Tourism Office puts a great deal into fishing locally, and there are lots of little places like this one, Les Flottes Bleu. For more information about fishing locally, visit the Pas de Calais Tourism website. Will that man ever catch a fish in any country? <laughs> Who knows? But I tell you what he's really good at is hooking clips on the internet. It's now time for Hooked on YouTube. Charlie Jacoby here. This is my weekly roundup of the best fishing on YouTube. Viewer Tom Aldous sends in a link to his channel, Hampshire Angling TV. In this episode, pike fishing in the margins, Henry's PB Chub, Tom and Oscar go out for a short session that results in fine fish. Viewer Mark Erdwin recommends Hampshire Angling TV too, and he also likes to watch Charlie and Sean from CNS Fishing Blog. In this film, they are feeder fishing with underwater footage. Mark says that they exemplify the passion and enjoyment that a father and son can share when fishing together. Viewer Graham Ward took his new Magicam to Bishop's Storford and District Angling Society's Lake at Hall Farm and is pleased with the results, and so he should be. Daniel Dineshi sends in his video to Hooks on YouTube and I am happy to feature it. He placed an underwater camera in Ramp Bay at Farlow's Lake for 20 minutes and filmed a group of carp shoaling. It's rather peaceful. Here's a charming film. Angler's Guide to Burton Springs Fishery by Brian Gay is a from-the-heart review of the Somerset Ponds. Carl 
and Alex Fishing continue climbing the British angling answer to boy band pop charts with carp and catfishing in France. They catch all manner of carp in this film. Viewer Tex Grebner writes to say, Yes, sure, Charlie, we both know I am a damn savage. However, I am curious if my redneck fishing tricks work on those posh British fish. He adds in a special message to Howell, I'd like to see that fella that does the fly challenge catch something on a glow stick wet fly. And finally, we're off to the Gulf for Salala fishing trip. Fish Fish Me caught Trevally, Yellowfin Tuna and Mahi Mahi and all in a day and a half. Designed to make you book a boat out of Oman, all bookable through the Fish Fish Me website. Click on the links to watch the videos or you will find them in this film's description. If you would like to send in a video for Hooked on YouTube, ping me the link, charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Well, folks, that's it for another week. I hope you've enjoyed the program. If you have, don't forget, hit that subscribe button. And if you want to keep up to date with all the other programs on the channel, please go to our website, fieldsportschannel.tv, and fill out that constant contact form. Don't forget, you can get involved with the program by posting a comment on our Facebook page. And also, if you want to up-to-date information of exactly what we're doing, follow us on Twitter. I'll see you next week on Fishing Britain.